Well, do we got ourselves another tag video? Yes, we got ourselves another tag video. Like I said, this is tag week this week, so I'm going to be catching up on some of the tags that people have been uh, tagging me on. So, um, let's get to it. Hello everyone, Britton here, also known as Some Okie Dude, and today I'm going to be doing yet another tag uh, video. And today I'm going to be doing the Counting the Days, which is eight books that excite me tag. My friend Micah S. Vernon from uh, Habitual Blood tagged me into this, so thank you, Micah, very much kindly for uh, doing this video. I will also link the video of the original people who started the tag down below in the description. Um, but it's basically me talking about eight books that I am looking forward to reading for one reason or another. There's going to be eight questions I'm going to be answering today. I'm going to be tagging a couple people. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. Uh... Not really much else to say. I mean, it, it's kind of always weird for me making these tag videos because, well, you know, I always do these kind of off the cuff. But, all right, let's get to it before I start rambling on for too long. So, counting the day's tag, the first question we got here is, what is a book that excites you because of its cover? Now, I'll admit, this list was kind of tough to make up. This was kind of tough to put together because there are a lot of books that I want to read before I die. And a lot of books I would like to read you know, in the near future as well. But, you know, this this is one of the questions that was really hard to do because I'm kind of a cover snob, if you will. I really like a good cover, you know? Like, I like a cover that really grabs your eye and you really want to, um... And, and it makes you curious about what the book is about. But the book I have that is a book that excites me because of its cover, I have uh, More Do by Alex Fabi? Phoebe? I'm not entirely sure. Um, I really love the cover of this, though. I mean, look at that. It's very, it has that kind of charcoal style. Um, who made it? A guy named James Nunn. So, James Nunn. This guy, he knows what he's doing. Um, I love the, I love the art of this. I love the, um, the charcoal style. I really dig it a lot. It really grabs your attention, I think. It kind of reminds me of the Jonathan Strange and... Mr. Norrell um, art style, though it's not quite as clean. Um, I've heard a lot of people compare this book to Mervyn Peake, uh, Mervyn Peake's Gormenghast, which might make an appearance on this list. Uh, keep your eyes open. Um, but uh, More Do is a book I'd like to read at some point because it just looks really, it looks really interesting. It looks like a unique, strange kind of fantasy, and that's the kind of fantasy that I like the most. We even have a blurb from Marlon James, who wrote the excellent Black Leopard Red Wolf, who might also be making an appearance on this list. So, yeah, no, More Do is probably the first one. I'm really, I would really love to read this book and see what the what the fuss is about. Um, I'm hoping this book is really good because if 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 it sucks, I would be very disappointed. I'll put it that way. But yeah, More Do. Excuse me, More Do. Hoping to check it out. Um. I really like the cover art, and uh, I'll let you guys have a good look at it real quick. There it is, there it is, there it is. Uh, here's the back. Look at that. There we go. James Nunn. I will keep him in mind for more books in the future, but yeah, James Nunn. You're a good artist, man. So, yeah, I'm going to put this down. Uh, second question we have here is, what is a book that excites you because of its author? That was a that was kind of easier one because... That was also kind of... It was kind of hard, but then it became easier once I just was started looking around. Um, and that is, I mentioned him earlier, uh, A Brief History of Seven Killings by Marlon James. Um, now, if you guys know me pretty well, you know that I am absolutely head over heels in love with uh, Marlon James's fantasy novel, uh, Black Leopard, Red Wolf. I've talked about it a good bit on this channel. Uh, but A Brief History of Seven Killings is apparently a really good novel. Uh, I really love Marlon James. I, I love his just... I love his intense... Um, very feverish style. It almost feels like he's on a move. He really grabs your attention very quickly. Uh, it's one of the things I really like about Black Leopard, Red Wolf. And A uh, Brief History of Seven Killings is about uh, the attempted assassination of Bob Marley. Well, it's kind of a um, metaphorical exploration of that story. Um, and I am, I am a fan of Bob Marley, believe it or not. I think he's a very admirable figure. Um... But A Brief History of Seven Killings, I, uh, I'm really looking forward to it because I really love Black Leopard, Red Wolf. Um, I know this isn't really a fantasy novel. It's more like a crime, historical, 
uh, novel, I guess, spy novel even. I heard there's CIA stuff in this. I'm not entirely sure. Conspiracy thriller, I guess, would be a better way to describe this. Um, yeah, I really want to. I really want to check this book out at some point. Maybe next year I'll I'll check it out and see what the what the fuss is about. But uh, it won the Man Booker Prize, as it says right here. So clearly it did something right. I'm hoping that it'll be good because um, I like Marlon James and uh, apparently my friend Raff really liked this book. So um, I I have faith in Raff. He has good taste. So uh, yeah, I hope Brief History of Seven Killings will be um, really good. I'm I'm really hoping. Here's hoping. Um. So next one I have, number three, what is a book that excites you based on its premise? Uh, now, I should note before I get into this, I don't own all of the books that I'll be talking about today. As, as a matter of fact, there's going to be a lot of books on this list that I don't own, so keep in mind. Um, but the third question, my answer was actually, this was actually one of the easier questions, because um, I am a big sucker for concept, and... The premise that really interested me was A Night in Lonesome October by Roger Zelazny. I remember hearing about this from um, uh, Jay from Captured in Words. Uh, he was quite fond of this book, and he said it was really good. Um, said it was a good Halloween read. Said it was a good fall read, if I remember right. Um, and I really love the concept. It's basically all these old literary characters, these old characters from history and literature come together and they play a game and also the game might have something to do with the Cthulhu mythos sign me up I, I, I love that I really um, there's not really much else to say I mean classic literature characters going up against uh, cosmic horror say no more I want to know what's going on there I have heard some people say this is not the best place to start with Roger Zelazny a lot of people have told me to start with the Amber series um, I, I would also like to read the Amber series. Zelazny is a character I've wanted to, as a writer, I've wanted to read for a long time. I know that uh, Lord of Light is apparently very well loved, um, and the Amber series is very well loved. Uh, Robert Kirkman is making an adaptation, believe it or not. Uh, him and his friend uh, Dave Alpert, who's like his producer, he's helped him on a lot of stuff. Very much surprising to me. I. Um, I'm not entirely sure. Um, I, I didn't know he, he read classic fantasy, so yeah, there we go. But a night in lonesome October is my question. Is my uh, my answer for number three? I, I really am looking forward to reading that book whenever I get around to it. I hope I, I can get to it at some point. Um, hope I'm really hoping it's a Halloween read because it seems like it would be a good one for Halloween. I mean, it's in the title, uh, "Night in Lonesome October Halloween." So yeah, there you go. That's all I got to say about that. Number four, what is a book that excites you based on its style? Um, this was another one that was really hard for me to to kind of pick. There were a couple I, I kind of ran through. I, I, there was some Faulkner. Um, there was, uh, oh, man, um, maybe uh, there was, you know, Brian Catling. You know, there was, you know, there's some other people. Uh, but the one I ended up picking is uh, one that some of you might be familiar with, um, and that is Pale Fire by Vladimir Nabokov. Now, if you guys remember, I am a big Lolita nut. I have talked about it a lot on this channel. I talked about it in my previous tag video. I made a review of it. I won't go into it, but I love that book. I think it's a phenomenal piece of literature. And Pale Fire is apparently really good. Uh, it's really Nabokov really playing with form as he likes to do. Um, I, I love Lolita, I adore it, you guys know this, uh, but I've never been able to read any of his other works. I, I've always been intimidated away, because, you know, apparently it's very, um, he, he, you know, Lolita, as complicated and as twisted as it is, it is very much a straightforward story, as much as you're going to get from Vladimir Nabokov. But, um, apparently he really loves to play with form in a lot of his other books, so... And Pale Fire is apparently, like, it's a poem, but there's also, like, commentary about the poem, and, like, that's also a big thing, and it's, uh, the, un the, the poem editor is kind of the unreliable narrator of the story, but I haven't read it. That's another one I'm, I might get to next year. We'll, we'll see about that. I'm not entirely sure, but I would love to read Pale Fire at some point, because, um, Nabokov, I think, is one of the great stylists of the English language. He really is 
one of the finest writers who ever lived. And I, I, I can say that having only read Lolita, because Lolita is such a masterful piece of literature. And uh, one I, I think I always try to tell people to go read, though I totally would be, wouldn't be shocked if a lot of people don't like it. It's definitely a book that will alienate some people. Um, but Pale Fire by Vladimir Nabokov, I really like. Um, I would, I, I'm, I'm thinking about getting to it next year, so we'll, we'll see what happens. I, I really like, um, um, I'm really hoping that it's good. So, if anyone's actually read Pale Fire, I mean, let me know what you think of it down below. I think it's, um, uh, I, I'm not entirely sure, but I'm hoping it's good. Number five, what is a book that excites you because of its influence? Uh, this was another one that was complicated. Like I said, this was a difficult list to do because I had to like I had to pick all these books that I was I was wanting to read, and it was pretty hard kind of picking up all the ones that I was, you know, I, I had to read. But uh, the one I picked was uh, Gormenghast by Mervyn Peake. I'm actually hoping to read Titus Grown, uh, hopefully in September, hopefully if everything goes well. I will read um, T Titus Grown in September, which is like, hold on, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, uh, uh, that, so that right there is, um, is the first book. Now, this is not one book before anyone starts freaking out and saying, Britain, you savage, what are you doing? This is three books in one volume. My parents decided to get me this, so uh, thanks, Mom and Dad. Um, but, uh, apparently it's a very influential book among the fantasy authors who, uh, don't necessarily want to follow Tolkien's model. So China Mieville is very fond of this, uh, series. Uh, Michael Moorcock, in particular, is a fervent defender of this series. And if I remember right, he actually knew Mervyn Peake, uh, because he's old enough to have lived in the same time, uh, time line as uh, Mervyn Peak, but apparently this is a very brilliant, very Dickensian fantasy, and I am a huge fan of Charles Dickens, so I'm really hoping that this series will be as good as people tell me it is. Um, and apparently the pro style is really, really, really good, so yeah. Gorman Gas by Mervyn Peak is my pick for number five. I really, I really enjoy, um, uh, it really sounds like something I'll enjoy, so yeah, I'll just put this down. Rest of the books, I will admit, I don't own. I'm sorry, so let's get into it. Number six, uh, what is a book that excites you because of its emotional weight? This was another one that was hard. You know, I, I, there's not a lot of books that I, I wanted to, uh, that I've picked up that, like, people have been like, oh, man, this book's going to, like, break your heart. Well, unless it was Mystic River, which it absolutely did, so don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that uh, they're completely wrong about that. Um... But I decided to pick one that's a little unconventional, one I've wanted to read for a very long time, but I just haven't gotten around to it yet, and it's a short story collection. It's not really a, a novel. It's What We Talk About When We Talk About Love by Raymond Carver. Um, this is a short story collection that like a lot of really famous writers really love. A lot of uh, It's gotten a lot of love over the years. It's described as one of the best short story collections ever written. It's definitely one that I would like to get to at some point, and apparently it is very emotionally stirring. It's very moving in a lot of places. And um, Raymond Carver, unfortunately, passed away when he was only 50. Uh, hard living had caught up to him, even though uh, uh, he had quit alcohol by that point. But um, what we talk about when we talk about love is a, um, is a really... Um, it's one of those on my list of I hope to get to sooner rather than later because, like, I have a list of books I really want to get to, but then there's those books that are, like, more higher on on that list. Uh, what we talk about when we talk about love is definitely high on that list. I would love to read that book at some point. It's definitely one that a lot of people say you should read before you die. I, uh, I definitely, um, I definitely would love to. I'm not against reading it, so... Let's get to number seven. Number seven, uh, what is a book you are excited about because of its sense of humor? Uh, this was um, kind of, this was another kind of tough one, but I ended up picking Discworld by Terry Pratchett. A lot of people, this is another one of those books like Malazan or, or, or uh, Lonesome Dove, which I'm reading right now, that a lot of people are like, oh my God, Britain, you got to read Discworld. It is totes the best thing of all time. It is one of the best 
things of all time. Go read it as soon as possible. I don't care what else you want to read. Just read Discworld. And I'm actually hoping to get to Guards Guards sometime this year. I don't know when that will be because uh, this year has gone in some very unexpected directions. But um, I'm hoping to get to at least Guards Guards. A lot of people are like, oh no, Color of Magic. But uh, I've heard some people have some pretty lackluster things to say about Color of Magic. I will try Color of Magic, but I'm really leaning towards Guards Guards. So I'm sure Raph and Derry will be very pleased to hear that Discworld by Terry Pratchett is on this list because of its sense of humor. Um, I actually, I mean, if you don't mind me cheating, I would also like to read the rest of the uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy series because I love the first one a lot. And um, Douglas Adams, man, that guy's a genius. Not much else I can say about it. Maybe a Nancy voice as well, but mainly Discworld. I'm talking about Discworld today. So, yeah, this world by Terry Pratchett. Apparently, it's really, really funny, and um, I, I hope I hope that Raff and Derry are right. So, I have nothing else to say on that. Number eight. This is the final one. What is a book that excites you because of its challenge and difficulty? Now, this was another one that was pretty complicated to get to because there's a couple of difficult books that I would like to try at some point. Uh, Jerusalem by Alan Moore was in the running. I, I was really thinking about that book. But this one, this one really, really had my attention because I really like the time period that this was set in. And that is Mason and Dixon by Thomas Pynchon. Now, I bet a lot of you who know of Thomas Pynchon are probably like, well, wait, Britain, what about Gravity's Rainbow? Isn't that like the most difficult book ever written? Well, apparently so. But I'm, I don't know if, how, I, I don't know when I'm going to get to that. But Mason and Dixon, though, uh, has always intrigued me because um, it's a book about these two guys, Mason and Dixon, who end up creating the Mason and Dixon line uh, that's in the southeast, if I remember right. It is considered one of um, Thomas Pynchon's best work. I am curious to see why, and apparently the historical research that he put into this is extremely authentic. I, I did skim through this a couple times, and he goes down to the like minute, like the language is very much a recreation of the 17th century that he is attempting to mimic. 18th century, I think. I think it's the 1700s. So it's the 18th century. Mm. Mm. Excuse me. Um, but Mason and Dixon is, is definitely one that I, I would love to try at some point. I, I don't know if I'll like it, but I've only read one of Pynchon's works, and that is uh, Inherent Vice. And I remember liking it. I thought it was really well written. I think that Pension has a very playful, authorial voice, which is always nice. Um, I don't know if I fully understood everything he was going on about in that book, but I, I thought it was really interesting, and I actually would like to read it again. I don't know if I fully was jiving with it the first time. But Mason and Dixon, though, that book I really would like to read, because apparently it is a very challenging book at times, and it is a very difficult book at times. Now, I know some people might go, well, what about Infinite Jest? What about Gravity's Rainbow? Yada, yada, yada. I definitely considered those books, but I felt that Mason Dixon was definitely one from Pension that I would like to read sooner rather than later. I don't know when that'll be. I, I might go through some other Pension books first before I do anything. But, um, yeah, that's it. That's about it for the questions. But, yeah, Mason and Dixon, that, that's it for questions. So now we're get to people to tag. I have a couple people on here I'd like to tag. Um, once again, I'd like to tag my good friend Carol from the Falcon Reads. He's a good guy. He's good people. Um, I, I would be very curious to see what he has to say about uh, on these. I think he would take to this tag very well. Also, Jordan from iWizard. I would really like uh, to see him uh, do this tag. I think he would also take to it very well. Also, Socia Zoo, who has uh, become a good friend of the channel. He was also on my podcast a few weeks ago. Really enjoyed that episode. You guys should go check it out. Um, he's a great guy. Um, really, really smart. Really knows what he's talking about. And uh, a more recent YouTuber, I Samwise, who is a really... Uh, I just met him recently. We've had a couple of conversations. He's a cool guy. Um... I'll tag him, because, again, I think he would also be a very interesting uh, person to uh, see do this type of video. There were a couple people I thought. I did think about tagging Jason, but I thought Jason should take a break. I often tag him and stuff, so, uh, yeah. But, yeah, uh, that is it.
for now. Thank you, Micah, for tagging me in this video, and thank you to the two who made this tag. I forget their names at the moment. I think one is called uh, People by Pros or something like that. I'll look later. But um, thank you to the both of them for making this tag. This was a lot of fun to put together. Uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. You guys can check me out on Twitter. You can find me on Goodreads and Letterboxd, where I write reviews that are probably more coherent than the one you just heard right now. You can also find me on Blue Sky. Uh, I don't really post there that much. And you can also find me on Instagram. I started my Instagram back up. You can find me on there. Come hang out with me. Say hi. Comment on my posts. Um, yeah, that's all I got for today. Hope you guys enjoyed, and until next time, bye-bye.